how do you have comfort or mm -hmm. confidence that um, the bacteria that we're using mm -hmm. is going to be safe and not give you know bacterial infection? Right, right. Good question. So there, there are multiple reasons and layers that we've built into our product uh, to ensure this. So the first, um, the first step is that we only use non-pathogenic or non-infectious bacteria um, as the starting point for our decoy products. And um, what does that mean? Yeah. So there are. Um, so even for a single type of bacteria like E. coli or Salmonella, which are both gram-negative bacteria, there are infectious or pathogenic E. coli, and there are non-infectious or non-pathogenic E. coli in the same for Salmonella. And the main distinction is something uh, we talked about a few minutes ago, which was that um, the pathogenic ones are strains that typically produce a toxin, okay? And then there are other differences that have to do with the ability of the bacteria to um, to proliferate easily once they get into the body or to evade the immune system. So um, we start with non-pathogenic or non-infectious bacteria. Um, that's the first step. And the second step is that um, we've chosen so far, we don't have to, but so far for our platform, uh, we've chosen bacteria that have uh, a very special mutation, actually. Um, these bacteria have a mutation that um, makes them completely dependent on adding an exogenous chemical to grow. So they won't grow in a dish, and they won't grow in a, in a person um, unless they have this chemical. And it's a chemical they use to build their cell wall, which is essential for their survival. And this chemical happens to be something that is not made by humans. It's not made by mammals. So um, we then, the next step is we kill, 100% kill the bacteria. And we know that the bacteria are 100% dead. And the reason we know that is that one of the FDA requirements for us to use this product in the clinic in, in, in human patients is we have to, after we make the GMP product, we have to actually show and prove by an FDA standard method that it's sterile, meaning that no bacterium can yeah. grow out of that, out of that vial, um, even when it's, when it's put onto the richest uh, bacterial food known, right? So, um, but we've got this, this additional fail-safe, which is I told you that the bacteria can only, could only grow in a human uh, if it had that chemical. And since humans don't make that chemical, this additional fail-safe is that even if one out of a billion or one out of a trillion of our, of our product was live, it can't cause an infection. It can't grow in a patient. So basically, you have a belt and suspenders kind of approach for safety. Yeah, you know, and that's what you want to do with any kind of safety in any, in any business or any field is you want to have uh, multiple layers and you want to have a fail safe. And we've really built that into our product. Great.